Hi everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Configmas 2022. I even dress up for the occasion, as you can see in my Microsoft Paint Christmas sweater. My name is Johan and I'll be host for this demo and in this demo you will learn on how to enable Dart for Config Manager for troubleshooting and enable it the right way, meaning starting it up earlier than early. And that means demo time. So, this procedure is based on a blog post I put together a few years back, which in turn was a remake of an older blog post I posted back in 2011 on how to do this for Config Manager 2007 at the time. Obviously, this is for Config Manager current branch, so let's get to it. You need a few things on the server side. You need to have the MDT console installed because that's how we enable the monitoring service. And that's also how we remote machines that are being deployed through Config Manager. It's not the only way to doing it, but it's a nice way of doing it. And it's integrated for this function by, by default. So the only thing you need to do, you need to install MDT on a machine and on your production share or deployment share, MDT production in my case, I have got in and enabled monitoring. So that's the only thing I have on this server. MDT installed, an empty deployment share, and monitoring is running. Now, when you do that, you also install a service in the backend. So it's a compact SQL database that keeps track of deployments that are running, and this little web service that allows you to interact with this. Now, you also need Dart, and Dart is part of MDOP, and MDOP hasn't been updated in quite a while. So if I go over to my ISO folder here, this is where I have my MDOP 2015 ISO. This is something that you get when you have software assurance with Microsoft these days. So if I go to the Dart installers, Dart 10, this is where you find the various installers, and this is the MSI file that you're interested in. So this is simply a next next installation that you install on the, on the machine as well. And when you have done that, which I have, you will actually have a uh, remote recovery or a remote connection viewer that you can use for this. What you also get when you run that installer is that in the installation folder, it extracts a few cab files. And the content of these cab files, it's what you add to the boot image to get the support for Dart in WinPE. So, to make this simpler, or simple, I published a PowerShell script that allow you to add this to your boot image. So, what I have here is, first of all, I have created an empty folder, uh, which I'm going to mount my boot image to. I'm defining where I have my Dart cap from the installer, and this is the default location. This is where I have my MDT toolkit, also default location. And this is the folder to which I have downloaded the example files from this blog post. It's up on GitHub. You see the link in the blog post there. But this is all you need to get it going. The .config file controls what components are being enabled in the boot image. And this one starts it. And this one is the sort of initial start progress for this uh, in the boot image. So if I open that file and just take a quick look, you can see that it's only running that particular script, talking to that particular server, and stating that, all right, this machine has booted into WinP. So not too many people know this, but in Config Manager boot images, if you place a well-crafted unattended XML file in the root, like this one here, I'm actually going to run that command before the native pre-start command in Config Manager, which will on typically through tsconfig.ini, etc. So that's what we have. So I'm going to go through the script real quick, setting some variables, telling it where I have my Config Manager boot image, the name of it. So here in my console, if I go to software library, I do have a boot image that it named this, and obviously that name have to match. So I'm going to run that little section, and then I'm going to connect to the Config Manager console to get the um, PowerShell command for Config Manager. 
so I can uh, essentially get that boot image information from Config Manager by running this snippet. And as you can see now, if I make this window a little bit larger and run this one here, this is what you see. I, I am talking to the, the boot image object inside in Config Manager here. Then the script has some basic checks, just making sure that the paths exist, etc., that you have defined. And then with this line here, I'm mounting the boot image into that mount folder. And then the following lines of the script, simply adding in, expanding the, the cab files that we defined, the tools cab I showed you earlier. It removes a file that we don't need, and then it copies the config file over together with some scripts to make this all work. So bottom line, we run this. And now if I go over to my mount folder, of course it will still be mounted, but in the, the root I will have my HANA 10 file that was added. And in the Windows System 32 folder, this, for example, is where you have the remote recovery component, which is the sort of server side of Dart when you're remoting into it. But I'm good with that. I'm going to close Explorer window, so I'm making sure all handles are closed. And then I'm going to go ahead and save the changes to the boot image by running this line. And then I'm going to update that boot image and config manager. So this is a built-in commandlet on basically how to update the DP for, a, in this case, a boot image. So I'm going to run this little snippet. And this is going to take a little while for it to update the boot image. It usually takes a minute or two. So I'm simply going to edit this uh, part out or cut this part out of the recording so it will go through a little bit faster. All right, boot image is updated. As you can see here in the script, I also added in a little snippet that you can look through to verify that distributions is done and if you have a lot of distribution points. In my environment, I have a single DP and it's on the same subnet as my site server. So distributing it to that one is actually super quick. So I don't have to, to wait for it there much. But this means I can now pick a boot client. So I'm gonna bring up one of my virtual machines not on that server, but on this server. I'm gonna to go to a uh, clean snapshot. And I'm gonna move it to the Stockholm location. In a second, I will move it to the Stockholm location. Here we go. And boot it up. Enter to Pixaboot, the boot image that I modified, uh, this particular ID here, is matching the one that we had here, so boot image number six. I'm not sure why I start that one, it's this one I wanted to show. So, the boot image now loads, it will launch an attend XML file very, very shortly. And then that an attend file starts the script that in turn starts this component here to remote or remote connection function of Dart. So I can minimize that one and I can go over to my server. Because now if I go to the monitoring node and refresh it here, you can see I have this machine that has been booted into WinP and it's been running for like 11 seconds here. But now I can double click this one and I can remote into it. And that means that from whenever you have the console available or this remote connection viewer, then you can actually continue and even type in the password that is needed. If you type it correctly, it will help also a lot. But now I can pick one of my sequences and I can do a deployment from here.
give it a computer name if needed. Um, PC0075 is a good name as any. And off we go. This particular environment, I've enabled the debugger because I was doing some troubleshooting. But of course, you don't need that one. Disable it. In this case, I'm just going to run it. And it's going to go through a normal deployment like anything else. But now I do have options to either press F8 to get a command prompt, or since I have the debugging window enabled, I can use that one to get a command prompt as well. That's all you need to do to be able to troubleshoot deployments in the WinP phase remotely. And that was all for today. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope to see you again tomorrow for another demo. Bye for now. Thank you.